Distortion. It's everywhere in music, whether intentional or accidental. But what exactly is it? Now, technically, distortion is any change in an audio signal between two points, all right? But in practice, when musicians and engineers talk about distortion, we usually mean harmonic distortion, the addition of extra overtones caused by clipping in an electrical circuit. Now, there are other types, so let me break this down so all of you can use distortion to shape the sound you're looking for. Hey everybody, I'm Todd and I hope you're having a great day. I find that most people think of distortion as an effect, you know, think like a distortion pedal or overdriving an amp, but clipping is actually the cause. So when an audio signal's amplitude exceeds the limits of the circuit, the peaks get clipped, flattening them out, and they start to resemble a square wave. Now this adds what we call high frequency overtones, which create that characteristic that's kind of gritty or warm, the sound we associate with distortion that many of us love. Now different circuits clip differently. Tube circuits, for example, produce soft clipping. That means the breakup happens gradually as the volume increases. Now transistor circuits create hard clipping. That means it kicks in abruptly. So could you hear the difference? Soft clipping usually gives more of a smooth organic breakup. Hard clipping jumps straight into the harsh distortion and generally sounds like, well, you know. So when a signal is clipped, it introduces harmonic distortion. Extra frequencies that color the sound. Now these harmonics come in two types, even and odd. Even harmonics like octaves are generally pleasant and rich. Now we talk about them adding warmth and musicality to the signal. Where have you heard that before? Odd harmonics, on the other hand, like say an octave plus a fifth, sound harsher and more aggressive. Now this is great for rock and metal, you know, where we want to use power chords that really benefit from that extra edge. Okay, so let's talk total harmonic distortion, or THD. THD measures how much harmonic content a device adds to the signal. Now high-end analog gear keeps THD low. The idea is to preserve clarity, but some distortion's unavoidable. I mean, it just happens. And sometimes it's desirable. Now the rationale for clean systems is that if we start with low harmonic distortion, we can always add some, but it's more difficult to clean up a heavily distorted signal. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should always record clean, because when it's intentional, distortion up front can sound really good. Now as I said up front, harmonic distortion isn't the only kind of distortion we deal with in audio. There are several others. A term you hear all the time is saturation. This happens when tubes or tape slightly overload. Okay, that adds smooth compression. Now, analog gear makes this happen, and plug-in emulations are available for both. But we can even use analog gear to emulate the effect of other analog gear. Think about like Neve tape emulators, for example. Now, another type of distortion is intermodulation, which is essentially unwanted frequencies when multiple tones interact. We know that frequencies are not all individual and separated. Everything in audio has an interaction with each other, and intermodulation is a byproduct of this. Now, one of the most used intentional distortion effects is envelope distortion. The easiest way to understand this is that it alters amplitude over time. Think about this as what a compressor or a synth amp envelope does. Then there's phase distortion, which shifts parts of the signal's phase, sometimes causing unwanted coloration. If you want to know more about phase, check out my video covering phase and polarity. Some people think of distortion as noise, but it's not technically distortion. Noise is actually unwanted signal additions like ground hum or radio interference. So they're not caused by the original signal. They're not a product of it. They're added in addition to it by an outside factor, essentially. All audio gear has some noise floor, but we use proper gain staging to minimize its impact on our recordings. And of course, if you want to know more about this, check out my video on gain staging. It's gonna help you get the cleanest sound possible. Okay, so anyone that works with DAWs, converters, or digital recording gear has dealt with digital clipping. It happens when a signal exceeds the limit of a digital system, resulting in, if I'm being kind, harsh artifacts. 
Now, digital systems have an upper limit of the information they can carry. We measure this capability in what we call DB full scale, and the limit is always dBFS. Simply put, when the signal exceeds zero dBFS, the wave is squared off. It's just cut right off, which basically never sounds good, and is really more artificial sounding than any of the other types of distortion I've talked about so far. I'll have more information on dB scales in another video, so look for those coming up. But think about pruning a tree. If you just cut the top off straight, it probably won't look good. The more you cut it off, the weirder it's going to look. Well, if you chop the top off your audio waves, they won't sound good. And then there's aliasing, the digital artifact that occurs when certain frequencies are misrepresented. Basically what it means is that when digital audio doesn't interpret frequencies the right way. You probably know that in digital audio, sample rate determines the frequency response of a system. Aliasing happens when frequencies outside that range are not filtered out properly. Now without making this more complicated than it needs to be, a system operating at 48 kilohertz sample rate can properly convey frequencies up to 24 kilohertz. The basic idea, called the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, is that the sampling rate needs to be at least double the highest frequency we want to convey for the audio to be free of aliasing artifacts. And the key is at least. Many plugins use a technique called oversampling to deal with this. What oversampling means is that the signal is resampled at a higher rate before processing. A good way to think of this is that the higher sample rate moves the goalposts. The frequencies that are not filtered out properly end up being so high that we can't hear any effect they have on the cause. All right. So distortion isn't just a side effect. It's a tool we use to shape sound. Whether you want to dial in a vintage tube saturation or avoid unwanted digital artifacts, if you know these different types of distortions, you'll be able to make smarter choices when engineering your next project. So the question is, do you intentionally use distortion to help get the sound you're looking for when recording or mixing? Drop a comment below. I do appreciate your taking the time to join me today. And like all my videos, I hope this helps you make great music. Take care, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, everybody.